What is going on guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different to what I usually do on the channel. Now for those of you that have been on the channel for quite a while, I uh, will know that I'm more kind of, you know, hindered to, you know, speculation and things like that. However, in today's video I'm going to be doing a complete guide to your visit to Thorpe Park Resort within the 2020 season. Now I understand that quite a lot of you watching this video obviously may already know quite a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about. However, definitely stick around because hopefully this will get you hyped for the 2020 season. Uh, you may notice this video is a little bit longer than usual um, because there's a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, so I will be leaving timestamps down in the description below. Uh, obviously, you know, I will be setting this video up into segments, but to make it a little bit easier for you guys, uh, obviously I will leave those timestamps down in the description. In terms of the segments of the video, the first segment, I'm going to be splitting that up into three different kind of major segments. Uh, the first segment obviously is going to be before you arrive at the park, what are the best ticketing options, uh, what you have to do. Uh, obviously, I will obviously be covering some of the COVID-19 stuff that's going on, uh, but I didn't really want that to be the main focus. I just kind of wanted to make a general kind of guide video. Uh, but obviously, I can't make a 2020 guide without obviously talking about the COVID-19 stuff as well. So that will be in there, uh, but I won't be focusing on it too much. The second section will be just talking about what the tips and tricks are like uh, when you're actually in the park, what are the best rides to go on, uh, different food options, merchandise options and things like that. And to finish off the video in the third section, I will be talking about leaving the park, uh, what are your best options for car parking uh, and different things like that. So if you guys do go on to enjoy the video, make sure to like, subscribe, anything that makes me know you guys like my content. Uh, and yeah, without further ado, Let's get right to the video. Okay then, so obviously one of the main things you will have to do before you visit the Thorpe Park Resort within the 2020 season is actually pre-book your tickets. Now obviously this is something that's been implemented especially for this season. Obviously you could always pre-book your tickets online anyway. Uh, with the recent COVID-19 news and things like that, obviously they are operating at limited capacity. So everyone does have to actually pre-book a ticket on the website. Uh, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is go onto the main page of the website, scroll down a little bit, and there will be the day passes option with in the screen. Uh, obviously the standard day pass obviously is £33. Obviously you do get discount online but at the moment that's all you can really do without it so they will be £33. Uh, obviously with the annual passes for those of you wondering if you do have a Merlin annual pass or a just a standard Thought Park season pass you will still have to pre-book a ticket, but however, there will be an option within this page uh, that will allow you to pre-book that ticket for £1, much like how you would do the annual pass tickets and things like that uh, for these special annual pass days. And if you're wondering how you actually acquire a season pass for Thought Park, uh, that is also listed there as well. Obviously, the standard season pass is £55, uh, so it's generally just a little bit uh, more pricey than a standard ticket. However, if you do want to go for the premium kind of uh, season pass, uh, that is actually £85. So in my opinion, if you are going to get a season pass, I 100% go for the premium pass because you do get free parking. Uh, so it's very, very important uh, because you do spend a lot on that when you're visiting the resort. But obviously, we'll get into that in just a second. But yeah, all those ticketing options will be listed for you in a very, very simple manner. Uh, and we'll have all of those prices until unless they are verbally changed. But at this point, I don't think they will be. In addition to the standard tickets and season passes that you can get on the website, there are also additional things that you can purchase on the website that will enhance your day. Uh, and these will be able to be accessed either on the main website or on the ticketing website, uh, because obviously they do have a separate website for your actual kind of pricing and booking and things like that. Uh, and pretty much what these are, they're pretty much just extra add-ons. You can purchase these at the park, uh, but generally they're a lot cheaper online. Uh, one of these obviously includes a meal deal. Uh, obviously I would 100 percent recommend getting this meal deal thing on the website if you are visiting and planning to buy food there. Uh, obviously what it is is you pay £6.50 uh, and pretty much you can choose either the Amity Kebab or the Colossus Hot Dog Stand I'm pretty sure. Uh, those, those are the two listed on the website, they may be more but those were the two that were specifically named on the website. Uh, pretty much what you can do is just buy the meal deal, uh, the standard meal deal that does come within the restaurant itself uh, for a cheaper price because you book online. Now I would 100% recommend this because Thought Park do have some very, very cheap meal deals within itself, even at the park. Uh, so getting a cheaper version online is a very, very must-have uh, because it will save you just a little bit of money, uh, but obviously that money can go a long way. As well as purchasing the meal deal online, you can also purchase a car parking ticket. Now this is something that I genuinely do very much recommend, mainly because the car parking at these parks are extremely expensive. Uh, Thought Park's obviously £10. <laughs> 
on the actual day if you're in the park. Hope if you do it online, uh, it does actually give you a slight discount. Obviously, it's £7 instead of £10, but to save the hassle at the park, uh, once again, I would recommend purchasing this car park ticket uh, because, like I said, it's a lot of hassle, especially when you're coming out of the park, to then go and get that car parking ticket, and it's not really something that I would really personally put myself through. Uh, but obviously, you do you if you don't want to purchase it online, but it will save you a little bit of money and also will ease the kind of stress when you're leaving the resort. Now, in terms of any COVID-19 guidelines you will have to abide by before you visit, there's not exactly too many. The only thing I would recommend doing is actually taking your temperature uh, before you leave. Now, I know that, you know, Thought Park do take your temperature before you enter the resort anyway. However, if you are driving a long way, it would be very much recommended to do this before you leave so that when you get to the park, you're not turned back. Now, obviously, if you do feel healthy and you've checked your temperature regularly, it's highly unlikely that you will get turned away. However, it is something that does save you a lot of time, especially if you live far away. Other than that, it's not really other COVID-19 guidelines you have to follow, obviously, other than the pre-booking. Uh, so it does seem kind of very seamless, and they're really trying to make it as easy as possible uh, for people to obviously prepare to visit the resort on the day. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say for before you arrive at the resort. And now let's move into when you're actually at the park itself. Now this next section is probably going to be the main bulk of the video. Uh, obviously I'm going to be going through three different kind of subsections if you'd like within this main part of the video. The first one I'm going to be going over is food and drink. What are the best options for you guys when you're actually at the resort for food and drink uh, if you are planning on purchasing it there. Uh, obviously then I will go over all the ride areas uh, and the rides themselves and just kind of point out which ones I recommend for you guys. Uh, obviously I know quite a few of you like I said may already know but hopefully this does get you excited for the season because yeah it's very much getting me excited talking about it. Uh, and then finally, finishing off this segment of the video, I'll then be talking about merchandise, where are the best points to buy merchandise, what merchandise I would recommend, and also talking a little bit about the pricing as well. So without further ado, let's get right into it then. Okay then, so in terms of your drink options, when you're actually within the resort, there are pretty much two main ways you can go about it. The first way you can go about it is obviously purchasing a drink as and when you feel thirsty. I personally do not recommend this just because of how pricey the drinks are at Thorpe Park. You're looking at about £2.50 for a bottle of Coke or Fanta, uh, which is a lot, you know, when you consider how thirsty you are going to be throughout the day, uh, especially when you're doing all that screaming. However, Thorpe Park does have an alternative option to buy and drinks like that and that is coca-cola freestyle now what this basically is is you'll pay 10 pound for a big cup it'll be a nice plastic cup uh, and what you will do is throughout the day whenever you're thirsty you can go to a certain coca-cola freestyle station you then put your drink under the kind of nozzle or you say yeah nozzle uh, and you then choose your drink and it'll pretty much just be refillable throughout the day now obviously if you do go to the resort again within that year, uh, you can also renew this cup uh, for a cheaper price as well. And I do think this is a very, very good value for money. I personally use it every time I go. And I think even if you're going for a day, you will end up kind of saving a lot more money than you would be just buying drinks as and when you're thirsty. And at that point, then you don't really have to worry about pricing and worry that uh, you're like, oh no, I don't want to get a drink now because I can't afford it. You can just get a drink whenever you want. Uh, and it just allows you to have a little bit more freedom with it. Okay then, so moving on to the kind of food side of things now, there are many many different restaurants and kind of fast food places dotted all across the resort. Uh, in terms of the branded ones, uh, the two main branded chains that they have at the resort are KFC and Burger King. There are two Burger Kings at Thorpe Park and obviously I will tell you where they are. Uh, the first Burger King is located within Old Town, uh, pretty much all you have to do is if you're going past the Jungle Escape building and moving through into the main section of Old Town, this Burger King will not be too far away from you. Um, it will literally just be on the right within the kind of old western building, so it's very, very easy to find. Uh, the other Burger King at Thorpe Park is located just behind Angry Birds Land. Uh, if you're moving past the pizza and pasta buffet uh, or next to the teacups, it's very, very easy to find. Like I said, there are signs all across the resort, but just to give you a general idea where they are, uh, obviously, just get what you typically would expect from Burger King, really, uh, and it's really too much of a hassle. As well as this, obviously, like I said, we do have a KFC. The KFC is located within Amity. Uh, it's very, very easy to spot. And as you're moving past Tidal Wave, you'll see a massive shark hanging out of a building, uh, and that is the KFC building. Like, once again, it's just got pretty much everything you would expect from a KFC. So, in terms of some of the more original restaurants at the resort, there is absolutely loads and loads to find across the park itself. Uh, one of the main ones I would say, or more, probably one of the more kind of restaurant-y feel kind of restaurants, that really didn't make any sense, did it? 
Um, I would say he's very much Finn's on. Oh, ooh, no, it's not Finn's this season, is it? It's Infinity Bar and Kitchen. I've got to get used to saying that. Obviously, this is kind of the newish restaurant for this season. Uh, obviously, it did used to be Finn's Bar and Grill. Uh, it does sell your kind of typical pub stuff, so it'll sell kind of uh, burgers and different things like that. Um, it's very good not only for a restaurant sense, but also for a kind of chilling area. Uh, there is a lounge area within there uh, that you can just sit and chill, especially if you're a parent and you know, you're know you sitting there waiting for your kids to go off on the ride and stuff. Uh, there's a very, very cool kind of chill area in there. Uh, in terms of obviously how pricey it is, it's probably one of the more expensive restaurants on park. Um, however, I have heard some very, very good things about it. So yeah, it may be pricey, but if the food's good at the end of the day, it's probably worth your while. Okay, moving on into another one of the larger restaurants at Thought Park Resort, we have Pizza and Pasta Buffet. Now, whether or not this is actually going to be open this season is still for, you know, Thought Park to announce because obviously with this being a buffet, themed kind of style restaurant. It's very, very difficult to open something like that, especially with like people touching the food. Um, however, this is located just next to Burger King, uh, and it's one of those restaurants that is quite pricey. Uh, once you pay the initial entry fee, you can pretty much eat whatever you want. Uh, they do have menu food, so I'm assuming that if they're gonna open it this season, they'll just have the menu food open. Uh, from experience, eating there is very, very nice. Uh, it's very, very typical kind of Pizza Hut style, uh, and it, yeah, I would highly recommend it if you're going for a kind of big lunch meal uh, that you want to fill yourself up with. Moving on to a slightly smaller restaurant at the resort now, we have Amity Fish and Chips. Now this is located just to the entrance into Stealth Plaza, uh, and it's pretty much what you'd kind of expect from a normal fish and chip shop. They have nuggets, battered sausage, normal sausage, fish, just a bunch of stuff. This is somewhere you can get a meal deal for as well. Uh, whether or not it's actually included within the meal deal that you can buy online, I'm fairly sure it is. Um, but yeah, it's very, very nice. It's a very kind of uh, smaller restaurant. You know, it's not a big kind of grand, uh, you know, spatial wise restaurant, but it is very, very friendly, very welcome. Uh, it's obviously been to an old diner, which is very, very cool as well. Uh, and yeah, it's one of my actual personal favourites at Thorpe Park. I think it gives a very, very cool feel. Uh, you know, it really gets you in that stealth kind of mood as well and that's some very 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 lovely fish and chips heading on into another kind of smaller restaurant at the resort we have amity kebab now this is kind of a bit odd in the way it's laid out uh, it's initially kind of like a stand uh, it can be found just you go over the bridge over onto the actual kind of main amity area uh, and yeah it sells many many different kebabs this is personally my favorite place to eat at thought park uh, it's very very cool. This is actually one of the places you can for definite get that meal deal on as well uh, So yeah, it's just what you would expect from a normal kebab like a lot of these kind of Places within the resort especially like the fish and chip shop the pizza and pasta are very much kind of inspired by other uh, You know kind of foodie trees uh, and this is no different obviously it sells many many different kebabs So you get your donut kebab and things like that. They're just main you know kebab meals um, but yeah, it's very, very nice. I would say that he's very, very filling too. Uh, every time I actually eat at this place, when I go to Thorpe Park, I never finish it. I have like a couple of bites left. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a very good value for money and you love a kebab, uh, this would be my personal recommendation. In terms of pricing, it's about eight or nine pound for a meal deal to get a large drink, some fries and the kebab itself. And like I said, it's very, very filling. So that eight pound slash nine pound is very, very much uh, used in a very kind of useful and worthwhile way. Okay then, so moving into the next subsection then, we're going to be talking about the areas of Thorpe Park Resort. Now obviously Thorpe Park is a theme park and much like many other theme parks, it does have themed areas. The first and my personal favourite of these themed areas is actually Swarm Island. Now it's kind of a little bit secluded to the other areas within the resort. Obviously, as by the name tells, it obviously features the swarm within it. Uh, but as well as this, you also have a toilet block just as you enter through next to the uh, kind of old style kind of phone box. Uh, as well as this, they have a couple of games there too. Uh, as well as a little mini shop that's featured within a container. Now, don't expect this shop to be open all of the time. Uh, it's running really on peak days that this is open. Uh, but we'll get into obviously more of the merchandise stuff in a little bit. Uh, but in terms of the actual ride of the swarm itself, it's a very, very good quality B&M wing coaster. Uh, obviously it's the only wing coaster we have in the UK right now so it's a very very cool experience and if you've never experienced something like this before I would highly 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 recommend actually kind of
kind of going into this. I would highly recommend trying to do this ride towards the end of your day uh, because it's so close to the actual entrance itself. It does lead a lot of people to be kind of magnetically drawn to that position first. Uh, but obviously I would explain a little bit more about the order in just a second. But yeah, this is a very, very good quality ride and I would highly recommend it. Okay, so moving on to the largest area at Thorpe Park Resort, we have Amity. Now Amity is probably one of my favourite feeling uh, areas within the resort. Uh, obviously it's a very kind of old school style um, area. Obviously it features within it a couple of rides. Uh, obviously we have Tidal Wave, which is probably one of the more notable ones, Stealth. Uh, and also Storm Surge. Obviously it gives this very kind of old, you know, beach style vibe as well. Uh, obviously you do have the beach that is also featured within this area as well. Uh, but don't expect that to be open really too much this season, you know, due to Covid. Um, but however, when it is open, it's very, very cool. You have the water slides and things, but because of like the water and social contact, it probably won't be open this season. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say this is not some very cool rides. Obviously Stealth is my personal favourite ride at Thorpe Park. And obviously it's a feeling you know, well, like no other. Uh, it's a very, very big, impactful launch. Uh, it may be short, but it's one of those coasters that is short and sweet and really, really, really does pack a punch. In terms of restaurants, there are loads of different restaurants. Obviously, you have KFC, uh, the Amity Kebab, Amity Fish and Chips. Like I said, this covers a very, very large space uh, within the park, and I think it's probably one of the more good feeling, uh, upbeat areas. Uh, obviously you have WWTP Radio which is playing all the time, which is playing some old school songs and it's just an overall really kind of happy vibe uh, within the park. Okay then, so moving on to one of the larger areas at Thorpe Park, we have the Jungle. Now the Jungle is home to not only Nemesis Inferno and Rumble Rapids, but also Jungle Escape. Now Jungle Escape is a very unique attraction. Uh, this is actually an upcharge attraction. I'm not actually sure whether this will be open this season again due to COVID-19. However, it's a very, very cool kind of escape room themed in the jungle. Uh, it's not really too expensive, about £10 for a normal kind of standard ticket. Uh, it's a very, very good kind of lengthy half an hour experience. Now, in terms of any restaurants within here, uh, there aren't really exactly too many, if not any at all. Uh, we do have the Bush Barbecue, which is a very kind of smaller, um, you know, eatery at the resort. It's not really got too much going on for it. However, it's a very, very good chilling place to just kind of sit and chill under kind of cover. Uh, it's a very shaded place as well, so if it's a hot day, uh, I would highly recommend just sitting and chilling in here and just eating and getting a couple of drinks. Uh, in terms of the rides, I would say these are probably some of the better quality rides within the resort itself. Uh, obviously, with it housing Nemesis Inferno, which I think is probably one of the better themed rides within Thorpe Park. Obviously, going through the whole jungle setting is very, very cool. Uh, and you do get quite a lot of time within that foliage when you're on the actual ride itself as well. Not only to mention also the pre-drop section through the tunnel with smoke is very, very cool too. Uh, and yeah, it's probably my personal favourites within the UK. Moving on to one of the more lesser known areas within the park, and I wouldn't exactly call it an area, we have the Dockyard. Now, the Dockyard pretty much... All it has in it is two different rides. Obviously, you have Darren Brown's Ghost Train and The Walking Dead. The ride, two rides that I actually don't know where will be opening this season uh, due to their kind of cramped nature. However, there's not really a lot to be featured within this area. It's literally just those two rides. But in terms of the quality of the rides, I would say they're very, very tip top, uh, especially Darren Brown's Ghost Train. If it's something you've never experienced before, it is a very, very cool experience to, well, experience. Uh, in terms of The Walking Dead ride, that's another good experience attraction. Uh, uh, the Dockyard very much does house these experiences, not necessarily just coasters. Uh, obviously, the Walking Dead ride is a coaster, but it's also kind of the, a thematic experience too. Uh, and I would recommend both of these attractions if they are open at the resort. Uh, but like I said, that's pretty much all that's really in the Dockyard. It's just those two rides. Um, but yeah, I would say there's some of the better quality rides at the park, especially within some of the other areas, especially the one I'm going to be talking about. Now. Okay then, so talking about probably now one of my least favourite areas in the park personally, and this is Old Town. Now Old Town's been a little bit weird recently in terms of attractions. Obviously during Fright Nights, this is a very, very hive of activity. Obviously a lot of the Fright Nights mazes are located within this one area. However, during the middle of the season, it is very much kind of bland. Obviously, we were supposed to be getting Black Mirror Labyrinth located within Old Town this season, but obviously that's now in pushback to next season. Um, obviously, the rides that are featured in here is obviously Saw the Ride. Um, however, I would kind of feature Saw as a little bit kind of off to the side, not necessarily within Old Town type of attraction. Like, 
It's there, it's classed as being within there, but it's not necessarily in the actual cowboy setting. Um, in terms of the actual kind of central old town part itself, uh, this is very much a like kids area. If you've got any small children, I'm um, sure they'd enjoy this area very, very much. The three attractions you have in here are the Rocky Express, which is actually a very, very good attraction. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Um, you also have the Timber Tug Boat, uh, which is one of those kind of rocking boats, sort of like spinny things. I don't know what to call them, really. Um, obviously, these are some of the most kind of frequent child attractions across um, a lot of the UK theme parks, especially the Merlin Parks. And as well as that, also, you have Lumber Jump. Uh, which is more of like a little family drop tower type thing uh, as well. So is this being a kids area? I very, very much highly rank here. But in terms of if you're going for thrills, it's not exactly the best area in the park. Uh, obviously, you do have a couple of game stores within the cowboy buildings in here as well. Uh, obviously, also you have Burger King, which is a smaller Burger King than the one that's in Amity or in Angry Birds Land. But obviously, it does sell a lot of the same stuff and I think has a lot better theme. Okay, so moving on to the last and probably I would say the most packed area attractions wise in the resort is the Lost City. Now the Lost City has got some very big main attractions obviously the biggest one is most likely Colossus. Uh, it's a very, very rough ride now but still does have a lot of punch uh, and I'd highly recommend it but the thing that really does make this area shine is its flat rides. Now also within these flat rides there is kind of a little bit of a downfall um, with it kind of lacking coasters but these are some of the best flat rides within the country if not the UK I would say. Uh, first of all we have Rush which is your typical kind of swinging flat ride uh, but really really once again does pack a big punch and is very very thrilling uh, as well as this you also have Vortex and Quantum now Quantum was actually facing quite a few technical difficulties last season uh, so we're not be open this season I don't know but then it gets to a very good attraction Vortex another good enjoyable attraction as well this is just a very fun area to kind of chill in these rides don't generally get too big of queues either uh, so kind of just going on these rides to kind of just kind of fill all the time a little bit uh, is very very fun and probably one of my favorite things to do at the resort itself but other than that there's not really too much location in this area you do have the uh, lost city kind of hot dog place uh, which again you can use that meal deal deal on there as well uh, meal deal deal that really does make that's weird to say meal deal deal meal deal deal meal deal deal that is very weird <laughs> Okay then, now moving on to my personal favourite thing at Thought Park Resort, and pretty much any theme park, and that is of course the merchandise. Now Thought Park has many other merchandise stores around the resort, however the most notable one I would say is the Mega Store. This is located just next to Storm Surge, uh, right next to Amity as well, and it's in the central part of the park. This sells pretty much everything you'll find across the resort uh, from all of the different attractions. Uh, obviously, you can also find a smaller version of this within the dome. Uh, this is the island store. Uh, obviously, this will also feature most of the stuff throughout the resort, but if you're really looking to get the full experience of merchandise, I'll 100% look in the mega store. In terms of the actual rides shops themselves, uh, some of them, including uh, Saw and the Swarm, do only have small shops that are featured in containers. Uh, so if you are looking for merchandise from then, I'll just, just really recommend just going straight to the mega store uh, rather than looking within those shops because they're not always open on off peak days uh, and obviously they're very cramped and spacious especially with what's going on now I wouldn't highly recommend it however you do have some high quality shops across the resort in terms of ride shops too you have the Nemesis shop which is obviously a very kind of uh, jungle themed shop which is very very cool uh, as well as this, you have the Colossus shop uh, which once again is featured to and themed to the Lost City uh, I would love to see some more kind of shops like this around the resort but obviously because of the space within some of the attraction areas it's not necessarily that great stealth doesn't have a shop at all so if you're looking for stealth merch don't worry just go straight to the mega store like i said uh, and there'll be loads of it featured within there okay then so moving on to, into the last full section of the video and probably one of the more shorter sections so don't worry if i'm boring you we now have leaving the resort now there's a couple of tips i do have for you guys if you are worried about car parking and getting out at the end of the day with it being limited capacity this season i wouldn't worry about it too much however there can be a bit of a rush getting out of the park so I'd just generally just chill about when the park initially closes just go and sit in a restaurant or something get some dinner um, because generally you know a lot of you rush out of the resort when the rides close uh, and it's kind of just worth just sitting and chilling uh, waiting for that rush to kind of go and then go out and you'll kind of have more of a smoother experience like I said at the beginning of the video I 100% recommend buying a car parking ticket before you go to the resort uh, obviously if you do have a premium pass 
uh, for both the Merlin Pass and the Thought Park Pass. You can get car parking for free. All you have to do is when you go out of the gate, just scan your pass and they'll let you straight through. Uh, so it's not really too much hassle there uh, in terms of you getting that done if you do have an annual pass. But to beat the rush, I would 100% just hang back for a little bit uh, and wait for the kind of crowds to get out of the park first. Okay then, there we go, we have finally completed my ultimate thought park guide. I hope you guys did enjoy and I hope you guys did find it informative. I tried to cover the main parts um, of the kind of thought park resort itself rather than just going into detail on every single tidbit. Uh, but I hope you guys, like I said, did find it informative. Uh, definitely let me know if you'd like to see any more of these, specifically for places like Legoland, Orton Towers, Chessington, because I'm 100% up for doing that. Uh, like I said, there is a bunch of changes throughout the resort this season. If you do want to watch a video that does talk about those changes, I'll leave that also linked down in the description as well. Uh, so with all that said, I will see you guys later.